If you take a laser and shine it at a wall with two holes in it, you have the famous double slit experiment, where waves coming through two slits interfere with each other to be bright in some places on the wall and dark in others. And this works with quantum particles too, since they behave in wave-like ways. Send a cat towards the slits and it'll show up at a point on the wall. Send a bunch of cats and their accumulation reveals the same interference pattern as a light wave. Now imagine you add another competing double slit experiment with another cat that shares one of the slits with the first setup. Of course, if you send the second cat over and over towards these slits, the points where it hits the wall will give a similar interference pattern. And at this point here for one cat, and this point here for the other, those cats never show up, no matter how many times you send them through the slits. Their wave-like behavior causes what's called destructive interference. If cats were light, these points would be in cat darkness. But weird things happen if you send both cats at their double slits at the same time. The top cat goes through the top and middle slits and then towards the wall, and the bottom cat goes through the bottom and middle slits and then towards the wall. And things would again go as expected, of course, except that the cats get in each other's way going through the middle slit. Maybe the slit's too small for two cats to fit through simultaneously. Or maybe, yeah, maybe one cat is actually made of antimatter, so if both go through the middle slit, they annihilate each other and never make it to the wall. Either way, the situation is now this. The cats traverse the slits in a quantum superposition of top cat top, bottom cat middle, top cat top, bottom cat bottom, and top cat middle, bottom cat bottom. There's no both cats in the middle in the superposition, since the cats can't traverse the middle slit together. And since the superposition is missing the both cats in the middle option, the interference patterns change, and it's possible for the cats to end up in the places on the wall where before there was cat darkness. This isn't at all surprising for waves. I mean, different amounts of wave coming through the slits means a different interference pattern. But there's something weird about this when particles are involved. To see why, remember that individually, the cat darkness arose because the cat's superposition went through both slits and interfered with itself to result in zero probability of the cat ending up there. So if the bottom cat does end up there, it must not have been able to interfere with itself. So it must not have gone through both slits. So the other cat must have been blocking the middle slit. And if the top cat ends up in its previously cat-free spot, then it must not have gone through both slits either. The bottom cat must have been blocking the middle slit. This wouldn't be a problem, except that when you actually do this experiment, some of the time both cats end up in the previously cat-free spots. And we know that they can't both have gone through the middle slit, because they would have annihilated each other. So each cat must have been blocked from going through the middle slit by the other cat having gone through the middle slit. Simultaneously. Which of course seems impossible, and is why this situation has been called a paradox. And it's certainly thought-provoking if you like to think about local realism or contextuality or weak measurement values or the interaction between classical logic and quantum mechanics. But it's not really that surprising, as long as you believe that quantum particles can be in superpositions, which happens all the time and has been incredibly well experimentally confirmed. As we said earlier, the two cats pass through the slits in the superposition top-middle plus middle-bottom plus top-bottom, which includes both apparently necessary blockages of the middle slit by one cat or the other. And it's this superposition that results in the changed interference pattern that allows for the possibility that both cats simultaneously end up in the previously cat dark locations. If all of this seems a bit weird, yeah, it, it is. But it's worth remembering that weirdness and paradox are not one and the same. And the quantum double-double slit experiment, whether you do it with cats or with electrons or photons, is fully consistent with the predictions and experimental results of quantum mechanics. Sometimes the universe is just weird. Can particles or persons take paths which they are not supposed to cross? The hardest paradox. Let's enjoy it. Any object or organism is both wave and particle. As humans, if our wavelength is long enough, we could certainly appear simultaneously in different places because we would behave as a wave rather than as a wave located particle. How long our wavelength is depends on our momentum. The momentum is the product between our mass and our velocity. In this way, some paradoxes appear when particles or organisms show a wave character behavior. Imagine the following situation. There are three doors open. They are 
A, B, and C. Michael on the left hand side can only cross through the doors A and B. On the other hand, Edward can only cross through the doors B and C. If their wavelengths are larger than the separation of the doors which they can cross, then they will walk through the two corresponding doors simultaneously. Michael will cross the doors A and B simultaneously while Edward will cross the doors B and C simultaneously. Let's assume now that Michael and Edward dislike each other, such that they will avoid the cross their paths at any cost. Then if Michael crosses the door B, Edward will avoid it. In the same way, if Edward crosses the same door, then Michael will also avoid it. You come to the door B, I will not cross it. If I see you going to the door B, I will not cross it. What do you think that the final result will be? I cross the doors A and B. One moment, I cross the doors B and C. The final detection pattern suggests that Michael and Edward have both crossed the door B. But how is it possible? They have both said that they would not cross the door B if they see each other. Michael and Edward behavior is equivalent to the behavior of an electron-positron pair crossing through the same doors. The positron is the antiparticle of the electron. Then, if the electron meets the positron, they would annihilate for sure. However, the final patterns of detection suggest that both particles still cross the door B. The Hardy's paradox has been proved experimentally. How do you think that we can solve this paradox theoretically? Please wait for the solution by the end of July. Continue with us. In summary, in quantum mechanics, there are cases where the particles appear where apparently they shouldn't do it. This is the famous Hardy's paradox. In today's episode, we will talk about the solution of the Hardy's paradox. This is naturally connected with the quantum structure of space-time. Let's enjoy it! Let's remember a little bit about the Hardy's paradox. Imagine Michael on the left hand side being able to cross only through either door, A or B. Meanwhile, Richard on the right hand side is only able to cross through the doors B and C. They hate each other and they have promised not to cross through the door B if they perceive each other around there. I hate you Richard, if you cross the door B, I will never go there. Who told you Michael that I want to see you? Let's then analyze the different possible outputs for this situation. Option 1. Michael crosses the door A, while Richard crosses the door C. Option 2. Michael crosses the door B, while Richard still crosses the door C. Option 3. Michael now crosses the door A, while Richard crosses the door B. Finally, the option 4. Both Richard and Michael are now crossing the same door B. This would certainly produce a fight and no one would be able to cross the door B at all due to this conflict. Let's take a look again at the same options, but now considering what happens after Michael and Richard cross the corresponding doors. Imagine that a traffic light signal is a sensor which activates some specific light color depending on which door Michael and Richard cross. Let's imagine then that the red light corresponds to the first option where no one crosses the door B. The second and third options would correspond to the cases where either Michael or Richard cross the door B. If only one of them crosses this door, then the sensor will activate the yellow light. This is the case no matter who is the one who crosses the door B. Finally, for the option where both Richard and Michael can enter the door B simultaneously, assuming that there is no fight, the green light would be activated. But is it really possible for them to cross the same door, even if an imminent fight would appear? 
Let's put this in a different perspective. The case of Michael and Richard entering the same door simultaneously is equivalent to the entrance of an electron-positron pair through the same door B. It is something simply impossible to occur because the electron is the antiparticle of the positron. When both particles meet at the same point, they would simply annihilate each other. In the quantum universe, Michael would enter simultaneously the doors A and B, and Richard would enter the doors B and C simultaneously. This is the case as far as their de Broglie wavelengths are longer than the separation of the doors. Then all the options previously mentioned occur with certain probability. Then, if we send Richard and Michael to cross the same doors many times, sometimes the red light would be activated, sometimes the yellow light would be activated, and surprisingly, sometimes the green light, namely the one associated to the fact that both kids cross the door B, would be also activated. Then, at the quantum level, all the lights are activated with certain probability. But what is it possible for the green light to be activated even if it is impossible for Michael and Richard to cross the same doors simultaneously? The response to this question is inside the quantum structure of the space-time. There is basically an intrinsic uncertainty associated to the arrival times experienced by both Richard and Michael when they approach to the door B. In such a case, they can both cross the door B without noticing each other, and then the conflict is just avoided. But wait a minute. The green light is only activated if Michael and Richard interfere with each other when they cross the door B. How can then the green light get activated if they cross the same door but at different instants? The response to this question is inside the energy time uncertainty principle and it corresponds to the understanding of the double slit in time. Then events happening at different instants but on the same special point can interfere with each other as far as the time separation between the events is small enough or better consistent with the uncertainty principle. In this way, Michael and Richard can both cross the door B at different instants and still interfere with each other on their paths. This is the main reason because of which the green light can still be activated.